disciples who knew how notorious Saul was in his persecution would have said all of those things that Jesus promised about holding serpents and drinking deadly poison would be more likely to happen than for Saul to begin to embrace Christianity. Keep in mind, he was a pretty religious zealot. He was a Jew. He uh, was a Pharisee. He basically was one who was a stickler for the rules. He was a rather zealot. And anything that he saw as deviating from what he thought was right and acceptable, he was ready to go out and stamp out, even to the point of, you know, as I mentioned earlier, St. Stephen being martyred. That was at the hands of Saul. So he was feared among the early Christians, uh, those who had come to know Jesus, who had accepted him as the Messiah. That would have been akin to write out heresy within the synagogue. And so the people, the Jews who had come to embrace Christianity were seen as a threat, and Saul and others among them wanted them expelled, wanted them, basically anyone who was leading uh, people away from the synagogue to basically pay the price for that. Now, the beautiful thing that we celebrate today is God intervenes. Even someone who was as sure that he was doing the right thing, he himself who thought he was being godly in everything that he did, had his heart melted. That God can intervene. That God can change any human heart. And I think that's a message that we should take away from here today. I think really on two levels. Number one, that we never write anybody off as being hopeless that somehow, placed in God's hands, the Lord can convert hearts of stone to hearts of flesh and blood again. But secondly, lest we look at this as just being, well, here we are, we're the converted ones, we're the holy ones, we're the ones doing what God wants us to do because we're here in church. Remember, Saul thought that of himself. He thought he had all the answers, he had it all together. We all need conversion in our own lives as well. And maybe it's not this whole big turnaround. Maybe we're not persecutors like Saul was before he was called to be an apostle. But we all have areas in our lives that need conversion. And it's about putting ourselves there before the Lord and let God doing that work. What was it that St. Paul, as he he was Saul the Pharisee, thought? He thought that he saw everything clearly. He only was able to realize how messed up his vision was when he was literally blinded and kicked off of his horse. You know, he thought that he was acting in God's name, and it's very God himself in the person of Jesus Christ who said, why are you persecuting me? You know, we need to be very careful of being the ones who are the correctors, who have all the answers and going after everyone else, even St. Paul as an evangelist. If you look at his preaching, when he's going out and preaching to the people who never heard of Christ, he never comes out of saying, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. He came into their area where they lived. He respected their culture. Remember, he came as a Jew, and the early Christians thought that that was a prerequisite for being a Christian, and there was a, that was the first big controversy in the church. Whether to become a Christian, one first had to convert to Judaism before receiving baptism. And it was St. Paul who had gotten to the point of saying, no, that's not necessary. The old covenant has been fulfilled in Christ in the new. And remember, the first fight was over whether or not, you know, men needed to be circumcised and whether or not you know, certain foods were uncleaned, you know, whether they could eat pork and so forth. And it was Paul who said, no, it's not necessary. And this was the strident leader of the Jews who became the apostles to the Gentiles and said, no, this is for all, and Christ has fulfilled it. So he went into those Gentile lands, and he said, you know, there's this great spot. You can see where he preached in Athens. And he's standing there and he says, I see all the monuments to all the gods. He never says, oh, these are all false gods. He focuses on the one. He says, there's one over there that says to the unknown God. 
He says, I'm here today to tell you who that God is. And he had thousands literally convert. Not because he came in wagging his finger and condemning and saying, you've got it all wrong. He saw the good that was there, capitalized on it and said, here's the fulfillment. Because what he saw in the lives of his hearers was basically what Augustine said, our hearts are restless till they rest in you. And he says, yeah, here are restless hearts. They're looking for God. They're looking for the divine. May not have it right, but they're looking, they're seeking, they're trying. And then he says, here it is. And he laid it out before them. You know, that's, aren't we all looking for God in our lives? Isn't everyone looking for that, even if we don't use that language all the time? And we've got it in the person of Jesus Christ. The one who takes away our blindness. The one who converts our hearts, sometimes instantaneously, as he did with St. Paul. Sometimes gradually over a lifetime. And even Paul, I'm sure, would say that his conversion continued on even as he took on the life of an apostle. He wasn't accepted initially. They were suspicious. They thought it might be a trick that he was trying to infiltrate. But eventually, he won their confidence. And look where we are today. Not just a sect, but a movement where the church continues to preach the grace and the mercy of Jesus Christ. For us now, you've got someone in your life that you look at as a St. Paul who may be rather zealous in their antagonism. Just keep praying for them. Just keep praying that God reveals himself to them in the way that God needs to, to change that heart, to be likened to God's heart. And in the meantime, let's keep bringing ourselves before the Lord, that our hearts can continue to be transformed, to be created, not just to be created, but to be formed in to the people, the community, the church that God knows us and calls us to be. Amen? Let's turn to the Lord now as we offer our prayers.